Well, hello there. I'm glad to see that you could join me once again back here on the porch. I see on this nippy night we have the fire still going. It's a nice rocking chair for me to kind of sit down and relax a little bit as, as, as really we kind of look back on things. I know during this season of Advent, uh, we lit the, uh, this, this past Sunday in church, we lit the second candle and, you know, it, it reminds us because for us, it is the Bethlehem candle. It reminds us of pre prepar uh, preparation, preparing for things, but what is it specifically we prepare for? We prepare for peace. And you know, that's something that there's not a lot of that in the world, it doesn't seem. And especially, you know, I think, uh, you know, when I got up this morning, I wasn't really thinking about it too much, but as I uh, had, had come back here on the porch to, and, and kind of looked down a little bit, it reminds me that, you know, in history, this is a very important day for the United States. It was a day in which we celebrate, or maybe commemorate is the best word we should, we should use here, the bombing of Pearl Harbor. But you know, as I kind of reflect on really who we are and, and what we do, and as I sit here and look out the windows, it really is one of those things that, that we should really think about. It reminds us that, you know, we're not always ready for the things that happen in our lives, are we? The way I hear it from the story of, of, of uh, Pearl Harbor, it happened on a Sunday morning and it was about 7.55 when this thing started. And there were still many of the U.S. shipmen that were still in their pajamas eating breakfast when the, when the attack happened. You know, I used to sit here on the porch and I used to, to talk to somebody that, was, uh, that lived through that. They weren't right there, but, but they knew, they had friends that were. And unfortunately, of the 200 and, or 2,000 and almost 400 men that died that day, he talked to them about what that day was like. And when I remember that, remember what he told me and what he, what, what he told me about, it makes me really kind of think about my life too. And really, I have to ask the question, am I prepared? I don't know, maybe you all have done the same thing. Are you prepared? You know, there are things that happen from time to time. And I, and I think another day that I remember was very similar to that. And I was, I was at seminary at the time, and you know, I had just uh, watched a show the previous night about airplanes and buildings and how they don't mix. I remember that day of 9-11. Of and I think it gave me the same kind of feeling, the same feeling of fear that maybe some of those guys back then felt as well. But as I, ref as I think about it, and I hear these words tonight, and I think about that Bethlehem candle and I wonder about preparation. Once again, I have to ask myself, maybe you ask yourself this every day, am I prepared? Maybe the real question is, is prepared for what? You know, the reality of it is, is the more that, more that I go and I live through life, the more time that I, I, uh, I spend in hospitals, the more time that I see death. Just the other day we had a funeral. And I went straight from that funeral to the hospital. And then I went from that hospital to another hospital. So maybe, like I said, the real question is prepared for what? You see, the thing about it is, though, is that in our state, who I am, and who you guys are too. I've got to realize that 
I am prepared. And why am I prepared? Because of a little baby that came to Bethlehem. A little child. Some would say about eight pounds, six ounces. We don't really know for sure. Because I know that what I really need to be prepared for is not the stuff that goes on here in this world. Not the stuff that happens here on this earth. But what I have to be prepared for is that day in which Christ comes again. Sure, most of us would like to, like to think that that's going to be a long time from now. Most of us are in pretty good shape. We may have a few extra pounds from a few extra cookies. But we're in pretty decent shape. We can still get around fairly well. But the reality of it is, is that none of us will escape. When that enemy comes knocking at our door. And so what Jesus calls us to do is to simply be prepared. And that's where we have to once again remember, we're children of God. God's been preparing us for that day from the very time that we were born. When he brought us to the baptismal font, and we heard those words, even though we don't remember them, I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You see, it was in those days that Jesus marked us as his own. He marked us as his dear children. And that was just simply the start of our preparation. For most of us, we remember those years. Remember those years in which we can think of old times, old pastors, old... That. I remember when I was a young boy and I was in confirmation class, the pastor that was there that, oh, I just loved him to death. In fact, I was probably over at his house more than I was at my own. Of course, it didn't hurt that he had seven kids and that uh, I ran around with most of them. But all throughout my life, the Lord's been preparing me and getting me ready. And I'm sure it's the same with you. You remember those times when we've struggled, and there are going to be struggles in this life. There are going to be difficult times. I know that uh, there were times in my childhood as I was growing up that, uh, you know, things were pretty tough. We didn't always have enough money in the house. We didn't always have a refrigerator full of food like, like many of us do today. There were times that we went without. But the one thing we were never without was the Word of God. Jesus was always there with us, guiding us and directing us through our, our Sunday school and my fondest memories were always of, of this time of the year when I would go into the church and just see the church decorated. Oh, how beautiful it was. The Christmas tree up front. Seeing the choir in their robes. Singing the Christmas carols. Singing all those things that remember, reminded me to remember what Christ has done for us, that it's him that has come to us and, and he prepares our lives. First of all, by bringing the word. But then, also, by simply coming as a child. See, the thing about it is, is that we're messy people. Whether we want to, uh, want to admit to it or not, our lives are messy. It's filled with sin. But it was that babe that came in Bethlehem. It's out of that little town that Mary and Joseph went to. Oh, and by the way, it was hard for them too. To be carrying a child and have to go all of that distance on foot. 
Some of us don't like going in our nice cushy cars with climate control and all those other kind of things we don't like to travel. Can you imagine what it was like for them? But yet, it was there in a manger that Jesus came. It was there that he cleaned up those messy hearts. And he started that work of preparing those hearts, getting rid of all of the clutter, and coming so that he could take away the sin that was there. And it was as he grew that he taught us those lessons and he continues to prepare us through the scriptures and, and teaching us and telling us. Telling it the things that are important in this world and the things that aren't. Reminding us that it's not what we do. It's not how good we are. It's not, it, it, it's not how many times I come to church and be able to put up my hand and say I've got perfect attendance. Although that's, that's an important thing. But it's that Jesus did it for us. That he went to that cross. And he cleaned those hearts. And then he sprinkled some water on us. And said, you're mine. And I'm not going to let you go. You see what we find out in our hearts is, is that maybe we are prepared. And you know what? I know a lot of people out there in the world looking through this plate glass window here. I can see the people. I can see them driving by. And I wonder how many of those people really are prepared. But really what this day of Advent is all about is not only the preparation, but it's the peace. The peace we receive by knowing Jesus Christ. Kind of makes you warm inside, doesn't it? To know that Jesus is there. The world can throw anything at me. And yes, I know one day I'm going to struggle and I'm going to die too. But then when I open my eyes, you know who I'm going to see? I'm going to see that eight pound, six ounce Jesus. No, actually I hope to see a little bit larger one. I'll see the Jesus that went to the cross. I'll see the one that has the nail holes in his hands and his feet. The one that has the spear mark in his side. This past week, I, 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 I buried Paul. He was ready. Even though he had challenges in this world, and you know, he, he, he suffered and, and had to struggle with Down syndrome and all of the things that go along with that. He was ready. He was prepared. And you know why? Because he just simply loved and trusted in Jesus. And you know, that's really my message tonight to you tonight. If you love and trust in Jesus, if you just simply believe in Jesus, you're ready too. You know what? That does bring us peace. Gives us a reason to celebrate. And I think next week we'll talk a little bit about the joy that brings to our hearts. Well, it's kind of getting a little bit late. It's been a long day for me, so I think I'm going to get myself prepared for a good night's sleep. And I pray that you all have a pleasant sleep and a peaceful sleep as well. Just remember, be prepared. Trust in Jesus. Because he loves you. You're his. In Jesus Christ. Amen.